All right, here's example three with integration by substitution. And uh, this is our first uh, example of integration by substitution with a definite integral. So uh, it's gonna be a little bit different than indefinite. Um, really, there are two different ways to approach it. Um, they're, they're kind of the same thing behind the scenes, but we'll do it both ways uh, and we'll compare them side by side and see how they're different, how they're the same, which one's better. Um, so th there is one way I think is better in general uh, and we'll try it that way first and then we'll do it the other way after. Um, so remember for substitution, we always wanna pick a U Okay, so we want to pick a u first. Um, so what do we let u be? So we want to um, look for a function and its derivative, right? So remember, that's always the trick with substitution, uh, integration by substitution. Look for a function and its derivative, or a function and a constant multiple of its derivative. And that is happening here. You know, the function that we want to pick is 7x plus 9. And then its uh, differential is going to be du equals 7dx. Okay, so the derivative is just 7 but the differential is 7dx, so gotta have that dx here because we have this here. So this dx has to be here because we have to take care of that. But anyway, um, so going back to picking u, how do we know what to let u be? Well, you know, if we take a derivative of 7x plus 9, we just get 7. We don't have another 7 out here, we just have like a 1. Okay, so this dx is like a 1 dx. Okay, so we do have a constant multiple of the derivative, but because the constant multiple is just 1, it's probably not gonna jump out at us. So remember, like we mentioned uh, with example one, if it doesn't jump out at you, um, just let you be the inside guy and see if that works. So the inside guy is seven x plus nine because that's inside of the square root. Okay, so we have a function, seven x plus nine, inside of another function, square root. Okay, so a function inside of a function, let you be the inside guy. So that's gonna work out here. So anyway, um, now if du is seven dx, then what's dx gonna be? Uh, so here, seven x plus nine, Okay, that becomes uh, u, right? So this is just square root of u. Um, so really this whole thing here, let's, let's write it like this. Square root of seven x plus nine becomes square root of u, because seven x plus nine is u, that's the substitution we made. And what about the dx? Well, the dx, uh, that's gonna become, well, if we divide everything by seven over here, so that's uh, one seventh du equals dx. Okay, so remember that was one of the two ways to think about doing that and that we talked about uh, with example one. So if you didn't see that, you might want to go back and check that out um, just to talk about the, or just to see the different ways um, of handling this dx here. But anyway, um, so let's continue with this. So we'll rewrite the integral now. So this uh, equals the integral. So I'm going to leave the limits alone for now. I'm not going to uh, write the limits yet. So what I want to do is say square root of u and then uh, 1 7th du. Okay because that's what the integral became now. So now we want to be very, very, very careful here. Um, when we do integration by substitution with definite integrals, we want to be careful about the limits. Uh, so if we say um, integral from zero to one, uh, that's wrong, okay, so we don't want to do that. New, no. new. No. Okay, why is that wrong? Because uh, zero and one, those are limits for x x is what goes from 0 to 1. x goes from 0 to 1. Our new integral is in terms of u. Okay, so we replace all the x's with uh, expressions of u. So 7x plus 9 becomes u, so this is square root of u. dx is 1 seventh du, so we have that. But now the limits of integration, they can't stay 0 and 1. Okay, um, it, you know, coincidentally they might be the same. In this case they're not, but you know, forget about that. Um, so we always want to change them to be in terms of the new variable. Okay, so x goes from 0 to 1. So now our new integral is du, blah, 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 du. So it's with respect to u. So we need to have limits for u, not x. So this is not okay to say that. So what do we do, though? Well, let's come over here uh, and set up a little chart. So if you want to make a little chart, um, let's actually, let's do that over here. So what we want to do is set up a little x, u chart. So x goes from 0 to 1. We want to know what's u. Well, remember, u is just 7x plus 9, right? u is 7x plus 9. So when x is 0, u is 7 times 0 plus 9, which is 9. Okay, so that's a, that's a 9. Okay, when x is 1, okay, remember, u is always 7x plus 9. So when x is 1, u is 7 times 1 plus 9. Okay, so u is uh, 7 times 1 plus 9. 7 times 1 is 7 plus 9 is 16. Okay, so when x goes from 0 to 1, u goes from 9 to 16. Okay, so when x is 0, u is 9. When x is 1, u is 16. Okay, so uh, these limits 0 to 1 on this integral, they're not okay. But what we just found out was that the limits are actually 1 and 16.
Okay, so that's what we just did with this chart here. Um, this little chart down here is what, that's what we just did. Okay, so we just found out that the limits are uh, 9 and 16. Okay, so when x is 0, okay, when x is 0, uh, u is 9, and when x is 1, u is 16. Okay, so that's what we found out with this little chart here. And remember, we used that substitution we made to evaluate it, uh, to evaluate u. Okay, so now what's good about this is we're completely done with x. We can just forget about the x, because now everything is in terms of u. Um, it's a definite integral, so we don't have to go back to the original variable, because we have limits of integration here, so we're just going to evaluate. Okay, so let's, uh, let's zoom in on this a little bit now. So now this is going to be, uh, let's pull out the 1 7th. So this is a 1 7th times the integral, and I'm going to write this as u to the 1 half du. And we're still evaluating from 9 to 16. Okay. So uh, 1 7th is still out there. This is just straight up power rule. So if we evaluate u to the 1 half, uh, or sorry, if we integrate u to the 1 half, so remember add 1 to the exponent and then divide by that. So 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves. If we divide by that, that's going to be 2 thirds. Okay, and then u to the 3 halves. Okay. And then we're evaluating from 9 to 16. So from 9 to 16. Okay, so this is really uh, 1 7 times 2 thirds is uh, 2 over 21. And then what we have is uh, u to the 3 halves from 9 to 16. So uh, this is just, so remember, evaluate at the top, and then minus uh, evaluating at the bottom. Okay, and then it's that whole thing in parentheses being multiplied by all that, right? So um, we can simplify that a little more. So if we want to simplify, so remember these parentheses are here because this is really just kind of like this. Okay, so constant multiple two thirds is technically in there, but we can just pull it out because it's just a constant multiple. Um, so you know this is just subtraction, so we can pull out the two thirds uh, um, like that, and then this u to the three halves. So the u, um, you know, to the three halves, we evaluate that from nine to sixteen. So evaluate at sixteen, and then minus evaluate it at nine. Okay, so if we want to simplify, uh, 16 to the 3 halves, so that's just uh, some old-fashioned algebra there, so 16 to the 3 halves is the same thing as 16 to the 1 half and then to the third. 16 to the 1 half is 4, 4 to the third is 64, so this is uh, 2 over 21 times 64 minus, now if we do the same thing here, 9 to the 3 halves is 9 to the 1 half to the third, 9 to the 1 half is 3, 3 to the third is 27. Um, 64 minus 27 is uh, 37. 37 times 2 is 74. So actually, I'm going to write that down here. Uh, so this, the final answer is 74 over 21. Okay, so uh, kind of messy algebra, not too bad. It really could be a lot worse. Um, but you know, with integration by substitution, sometimes it'll happen. You'll have some goofy algebra uh, numbers like this in the end. Anyway, that's uh, example three, and that's one way to do it. Now, there's another way to do it. Um, that's slightly different, and I, I really don't like this second way. Um, I think this first way is a lot better in general, but just to be thorough, uh, I do want to teach it, because um, some people do emphasize that and prefer it. Um, I just, I really just don't. So as much as it pains me, we will go through it. Uh, all right, so um, we'll do this one again. So example three again, so integral from zero to one of uh, square root of seven x plus nine. Okay, we'll go through it a little bit. Uh, well, we won't go through all the calculations again because these will end up kind of being the same, but how we get there is going to be a little bit different. So root 7x plus 9. Now, the substitution is the same. Nothing changes with that. That's all the same. So actually, uh, all this stuff up here, this is all the same. This part, same, same, same. So we are going to end up with this here. So uh, if we make the same substitution, so uh, u equals 7x plus 9. So du is 7 uh, dx. Okay, so then divide everything by 7, divide everything by 7. So uh, 1 7th du equals dx. Okay, so, uh, oh, sorry, very bad. Forgot the dx on here. Okay, so don't, uh, never ever do that. What I just did, that's very bad. So always got to put the dx on there. So um, this becomes the square root of u, and then this becomes uh, 1 7th du. All right, so now uh, what we want to do <coughs> is say uh, this integral now equals the integral of uh, square root of u times 1 7th du. Okay, just like we did before, but now um, if we don't want to, so we, over here we did this chart where we changed the variables, or excuse me, we changed the limits of integration um, using the new variable u. So if we don't want to do that, then what we could do is say this, from x equals 0 to x equals 1. OK, 
okay? And then what we could do is continue integrating. So 1 7th times the integral from x equals 0 to x equals 1 of u to the 1 half du, okay? And then we could say that equals uh, 1 7th times, so really the integral is still the same, right? We're still integrating u to the 1 half, and we still get 2 thirds u to the 3 halves. So 2 thirds u to the 3 halves. Okay, but now we're evaluating from x equals 0 to x equals 1, okay? So just like that. So how do we do that? Well, we have to go back to our uh, expression for x now if we're going to do it like this. So what this is now is, um, so that's going to be 2 over 21. Let me come down here. 2 over 21 times, uh, what is u? So u is 7x plus 9. Okay. So this is going to be uh, 7x plus 9 to the 3 halves. And then we evaluate from x equals 0 to x equals 1. Actually, you know what, since we're back to x now, we don't have to say x equals 0 to x equals 1. We can just say 0 to 1. Okay, so now that we're back to x, we can just say 0 to 1. Okay. Um, and this, you know, it's going to be end up being the same. You know, we're going to get 64 and 27 here. So, uh, you know, if we do that, we're going to have 2 over 21. Um, so if we evaluate at the top, 7 times 1 is 7 plus 9 is 16. 16 to the 3 halves. Minus, we evaluate at the bottom, 7 times 0 is 0, plus 9 is 9, minus 9 to the 3 halves. Okay, so we do have the same number, right? That's the exact same thing we had over here. They the exact same thing. So the calculations will all be the same. So we will end up with 74 over 21. Okay. But really, um, is this, let's zoom back out just so we can see them side by side. Uh, this way on the right here, is that really any, you know, a whole lot better than this? Um, I really don't think so because... You know, what's nice about the way on the right is you can avoid using the chart, but um, you're really actually not avoiding it. Because what in the chart, what do we do? We did uh, 7 times 0 plus 9, 7 times 1 plus 9. If you don't want to do that in the chart, you can do it like this. But um, here, you know, we're going to do those steps anyway. We got the 16 by doing 7 times 1 plus 9. So we can do it here later or do it here earlier. Um, and here, we got the 9 from 7 times 0 plus 9. Okay, so we did that over here in the chart, or we could just do it over here like that. Um, but, you know, so you're, if you don't want to do the chart, you can just kind of do this, but it's still the exact same thing as doing the chart, just a little messier, because you have these nasty expressions for x. Okay, so this really is much simpler to work with, u to the 3 halves from 9 to 16. Okay, that's a little bit easier to work with uh, than 7x plus 9 to the 3 halves from 0 to 1. Okay, you know, this really isn't too bad, but if you have like a nasty complicated expression for x, um, yeah, it could be a little bit worse. Um, you can still do it like this, but also another thing bad with this is you have to say from x equals 0 to x equals 1 to specify your limits of integration are for x. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just, it's really cluttered. Uh, it's kind of a mess. There's a lot uh, flying around all over the place here. You have too many variables. It looks like, you know, u and x just flying around everywhere. Um, it's just a mess. It looks much more complicated. It's not good. You have to remember to go back to the original variable. Um, it's just, you know, too much going on here. But here... You know, yeah, the, the algebra is still going to be a little bit messy, but it would have been messy over here anyway. You know, if we simplify that, it's the exact same calculation. But, um, oops. So over here, you know, if you do the chart first, you can get that out of the way so that the rest of it's simpler. So do the chart first. It's really not that complicated for this example. But, you know, do the chart first, get it out of the way. And then what's nice about it is once you do, once you get to this part here, uh, you can just forget about the original variable, completely forget about it, which is just really great. Okay, so, um, you know, it is, I think it's much better this way. Uh, if you really prefer the other way, and, you know, if you have a choice, it depends on your instructor, I guess, but if you have a choice, you know, of course, it's totally up to you. But I just think this way is much better because you don't have, multi, uh, you know, two variables flying around all over the place here. Um, and you don't have to uh, go back to this expression for x. And, you know, you can just get this calculation out of the way in the beginning so that what you end up with is a little simpler to work with along the way. So, um, just these two different ways of approaching it here. So for the other um, definite integral substitution examples I do, I'm just going to do it this way only. So uh, that's example three with integration by a substitution.